Well, hey everybody, this is Ross. We have a whole new fruit to try for you guys today and review. I've never tasted this before. I've uh, never grown it before. Never found it at a, a farmer's market. Um, it's called the Marion Berry, and it's growing here actually along the ground within this wine cap mushroom patch that I've created. Um, and the reason it's growing along the ground is that it's, it's a bramble. It's related to the raspberry and the blackberry. Uh, University of Oregon had bred this particular uh, variety and species. Actually, I think they've created a whole new species, I guess. Um, I don't know the exact specifics, but I know that they bred two different blackberries together and created something called the Marionberry. And you'll find, if you do a little search of like blackberry and raspberry crosses, you'll find all kinds of different interesting fruits. Uh, with weird names to them. You've got, of course, your standard raspberry of all different colors. You've got the black cap raspberries. You've got your standard blackberries, which the University of Arkansas has really put a lot of attention towards. And they've been breeding thornless blackberries and also primocane blackberries. Um, and then you've got the crosses in between those. You've got things like the tayberry, the loganberry, the thimbleberry. And now you've also have the Marionberry, and the Marionberry is actually quite popular, I've, I've heard, especially in Oregon, um, I guess in Washington as well. And there's a big market there of people who sell these things at you pick orchards or sell them at farmer's markets. And they're said to be the best tasting bramble that you can grow. So out of all the raspberries, out of all the blackberries, out of all the crosses, they're supposed to be the best tasting. And um, I guess we're going to find out. They are a bit young. They have been a bit damaged here. They have been neglected and sort of just thrown around. I've transplanted them a couple times. Um, just blackberries here in general in my yard have taken a back seat to other things and really haven't gotten the attention that they uh, deserve. I used to grow them years ago and they were huge. They were the, probably the biggest plants I've had uh, at the time. This was maybe three or four years ago. And I had trouble with fruit flies. I had trouble with birds. And it was really tough uh, growing them. So I said, you know what? We're going to limit the number of blackberries. We're going to narrow it down to a variety that I grow called Primark Freedom, which is actually right over here. We, we took it up out of the ground, and I got rid of it. But it, it just keeps sending up. Uh, sucker. So is it really uh, completely gone? No, it's still actually there. And I could, if I wanted to, I guess dig this up and create myself a blackberry patch once again. What I really liked about the Primark Freedom was that it was a primocane blackberry. And it didn't fruit at this time of the year. It fruits actually in the fall. Uh, which is quite good uh, for somebody who doesn't want to deal with birds. At least the birds in my yard sort of disappear at that time. They also, uh, we have a little bit less SWD pressure, if you can believe it. Um, because believe it or not, starting in like July, right around now, especially when the black cherry tree starts to get ripe, um, I have a lot of fruit fly problems. And uh, blackberries at the time just didn't seem like a great idea. It didn't seem like something I could really keep up with. I do regret not having blackberries though to this day so i would like to you know really get back into blackberries the best way at least that i've been um or the least the best way that i can make sense out of this whole thing is maybe if uh if it is going to be very difficult to maintain and grow and keep them away from birds and insects i should at least try to grow something that's really tasty uh which is supposed to be this marionberry um, I wouldn't have any objections, though, going back to something like a triple crown blackberry. Some, something definitely thornless. This marionberry has thorns. It doesn't seem to be as bad as other blackberries I've grown. But, you know, they seem to be a little bit difficult in getting established. You just probably need to give them a little bit more organic material. Um, keep the soil mulched well. You know, like a lot of these berry plants just need a little bit of help. Let me show you guys now the fruits and the plants. Because I want to do a taste test. That's really the, the best part about all these videos and growing all these different fruits. 
So here is just a very sad plant. It actually comes out all the way over here, uh, but a lot of this had died back. And what I do in the wintertime, because the Marionberry is not hardy to this zone, um, if you live in a colder zone seven, they will not survive the wintertime. So what I have to do is actually uh, grow them along the ground, or if I grow them on a trellis, let's say they're on a trellis, take them down from the trellis in the fall and cover them with mulch, whatever kind of mulch you want. That'll get them through the winter time. That'll insulate them well. And then in the spring, you can put them back up on top of the trellis if you're gonna grow them like that. I haven't figured out my trellis method just yet. I'm not worried about that because of how young these plants are. They will uh, tip root very easily. Um, you don't want to kind of step on these if I, I've been stepping on them. They have finally been putting out some nice growth though. And uh, I know you can pick these up at Stark Brothers for anyone that's interested and wants to uh, get these berries for themselves and try them. Anyway, here is uh, the berry itself. I had a couple this year, one or two maybe lost to the birds. Um, but here we go, let's, let's pick this thing here. It's totally black, came off pretty easy. I imagine it's ripe, I have no doubts. This guy here is ripe. Again, I think these guys would be growing better. I haven't had them very long, right? They're very young, but I think they would grow better, obviously, if you had more organic material. Um, I wasn't stepping on them. <laughs> the soil moisture was good. They didn't take any damage from the cold, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I've just been neglecting them. But here we go, let's let's try this fruit. It's pretty small. It's smaller than a blackberry. And I imagine most of them are smaller than a blackberry. It's not perfectly ripe. And you can tell when a blackberry is perfectly ripe is not necessarily when it turns black. Uh, you really have to be paying close attention. And maybe I picked this thing a bit too soon, but I don't want to lose it. I have very few fruits this year, as you saw. So it may be slightly underripe. I do see a little bit of red in here. And if you see that red color, that purple red color, the whole thing isn't fully ripe. So I imagine it could be more on the acidic side than on the sweet side. But let's try it. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. That's not what I was expecting at all. Because it looks like it looks like a blackberry. It tastes more like a raspberry to me. Wow. That is the best raspberry or blackberry I've ever had. Yeah. Holy crap, that's interesting. Yeah, that's a really good fruit, guys. Um, damn. It's kind of getting me thinking here, you know? Um, the raspberries are quite good, and it really does remind me of a raspberry, but a very intense raspberry flavor. That's out of this world how good that is. Um, also, it's, uh, it's got blackberry flavor in there too. It's quite juicy. Obviously, it is a blackberry, right? Um, it must have some raspberry genetics within. Otherwise, I don't think it's possible for, uh, for that flavor to occur. That's crazy. I don't really know how to describe it, guys. It's really wild, um, like a wild berry flavor. It's not like your standard sweet and acidity and that's it, you know? Um, it's got a really complex, interesting berry flavor to it uh, that is, maybe if you took a raspberry multiplied the intensity and that raspberry berry flavor by two and then combined a blackberry with that. That's what you would get. Wow, that's weird, man. That's so good. Holy crap. And maybe it was probably, probably wasn't perfectly ripe either, which is kind of crazy. But I'm going to preserve I have a couple more fruits well, I have one more fruit here potentially one more fruit 
and uh, that's what I'll do. I'll try to preserve that one last one there. See if I can get another taste of that. That's so good. I would say that's a nine out of ten on uh, out of scale. Out of, on a scale of you know comparing that to all other fruits, I do put the raspberry and I think the blackberry at an eight out of ten. Uh, so that's another notch higher. I wouldn't say it's at the level of a persimmon or a fig, which are tens, but it's pretty darn good. Uh, it's pretty close. Wow, that was out of this world. I wish I had more. I wish I could really eat more to really experience more of the flavor and obviously pick it at different times to compare exactly what it's like at different ripeness levels. Um, yeah, uh, if you guys are, you have room for a blackberry, um, I would strongly consider the Marionberry. Um, obviously, the blackberries grow very different than the raspberries. I don't think the raspberries take up a whole lot of space. As I've mentioned in other videos, we've done so many videos on on these black, on these raspberries here, guys. But if you get yourself like your standard reds or, or even yellow or pink raspberries like I have here, they don't take up a whole lot of space. I have them spaced here. This is uh, four raspberry plants of different colors. And they're spaced out, you know, two square feet. They get two, actually there's six plants here. I have the purple ones here, the red ones here. Uh, that's a pink. And then this one over here is a yellow. And they're still getting their, themselves established. But at the end of this year, my reds will be established again. Um, because my reds were putting out about a pint of raspberries every day. Um, that was from August to November. So they put out a lot of fruit in a really small space. I think obviously you should grow yourself some raspberries. Um, I would also recommend blackberries just because of how different they are from these Marion berries. In terms of flavor, it's like a totally different fruit. Although they look very similar visually, they're very different fruits. So I would probably grow all three. I would say it's definitely worth growing all three. Um, but if I had to choose maybe, if I had to choose one, I couldn't really say just yet because of how young these Marionberry plants are. Uh, but yeah, totally worth growing here, guys. I uh, highly recommend you guys try to get this experience right it's like a nice bottle of wine you're growing that you're trying to get that expensive wine for the experience not necessarily um you know you're willing to pay that high price for the experience and i didn't really have to pay all that much money i think i got you know three plants for 18 dollars from stark brothers so uh it's like a cheap bottle of wine that gives you just as great of a nice foodie experience so yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, check out our other videos we've done on raspberries and blackberries and other fruits. We have a whole playlist now that I've created. So I'll link that down in the description. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.